Ah, take me. Uh, a film that begins with the destruction of the Earth, like 2020. What are we doing today, guys? I'm glad you asked. What is up? It's Pie Man, and I've got a shout out before we begin here. William Paul from Melville for suggesting this fan cast in the comments, and if uh, any of you guys, especially during this trying time, uh, want to fan cast of anything, then just let me know in the comments, and I'll probably get around to it eventually. So, Titan A is one of the films Don Bluth made after Solomon Bluth Studios went under. I always forget that their production company closed and. All of Anastasia, Bartok the Magnificent, and Titan AE were actually under the banner of Fox Animation Studios, which also didn't last long and was later replaced by Blue Sky, which worked better at last. It was actually this film that was the final nail in the coffin as a massive failure for Fox Animation, and yeah, it just it didn't work, okay? It was kind of partly animated, partly computer generated, and it was about Earth being destroyed and uh, the Remnants, few remnants of humanity going after a ship that contained the only way that they could bring about a new Earth. It certainly was one hell of an idea. It was ambitious. Don Bluth, he'd never worked with sci-fi before, but they took on the project to stop the studio going under, and then it did anyway. Now, obviously, when you have Matt Damon, Bill Pullman, Janine Garofalo, Drew Barrymore, Ron Perlman, all voice acting in the original, you've got to pull out something pretty good, so let's begin. First up is Keel Tucker, our young leading man. If you aren't familiar with Titan AE, then just think of him as Jim Hawkins from Treasure Planet, except that came out after, so it's not like Don Bluth was copying him. Put it the other way around. Maybe. Tucker's dad left on the Titan, the ship that everyone's searching for that could save the Earth, when Tucker was just a child, and he was sent to live with his father's friend, Tech, in a kind of refugee colony type thing. It's never quite explained what that is. I don't know. He's brash, certainly a bit arrogant, but he turns out that he's just he's just trying to do the right thing. You know, he's just trying to do what his father would have wanted him to do. And that's just, that's emotion. That's, that's oh, got you right there. Didn't it? As a brash, confident young guy, just kind of trying to do the right thing, he's pretty reminiscent of Steve Harrington from Stranger Things, is he not? That's an idea. How about Joe Keery as Kill Tucker? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like 27, I think, but never quite understand what age kills meant to be. I think it is something like that because it was like 20 years later after the opening and he was already like seven or eight in the opening. That might make that, that, that works. Next, his professor, <laughs> his father, Professor Sam Tucker is one of those characters that you're kind of expecting not to be dead the whole film. Well, he is, and that's sad, but his role in the film, since it is quite minimal, it, you could just cast anybody, but I just thought it'd be really fun to cast him as Matt Damon, who voiced Keel in the original, and therefore voicing Sam in this one would be a lot of fun. He's, he dies in, like, the first scene, that's it, so... Why does it matter? Next. Now, here's... Oof. Here, here's the one I struggled with. The other lead is... It's fascinating. Akima Kunimoto is our purple-haired Asian? I believe so, okay? Purple-haired Asian leading lady that joins Kiel in the adventure and, duh, uh, falls in love with him. My problem in trying to cast this role is that I think that from the name, I'd assume she's Japanese. They're kind of, her, her look is, you know, I, I don't know the finer points of telling. Uh, this is gonna get racist. I, I not quite. I wasn't quite sure if she was Japanese from appearance, and obviously, <laughs> I'm talking about racism. She was voiced by Drew Barrymore, so that's that's fun. So the kind of thing I was looking for tentatively was a potential you know, Japanese American, at least just Asian American, because that would match the look and voice. That's as much as I could do to get around the fact that they cast the whitest woman in the world <laughs> to play an purple-haired Asian chick. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do something I never do. I'm gonna kind of lay two actors out there, okay? Because if you wanted to go for someone who kind of matches Kiri more closely in age, who's younger, I think Lana Condor for sure. She, obviously, you might just jump and say, that's the girl from to All the Boys. No, not a chance. What? But she was also in X-Men Apocalypse's Jubilee, and she was in Alita Battle Angel, and she was great in both of those as badasses. So, that's correct. But, if you were going to go, I, if you were going to go someone who just more purely matches how Akima looks, 
and what I uh, what I think kind of her actual age would be more like. I would say Jamie Chung. She's older. She's got the experience. And yes, maybe maybe she's a little too old for the role now, but she still looks a lot more the kind of age that I think Akima would be than Lana Condor does. I think Lana Condor looks a lot younger, but I'll let I'll let you I'll leave that up to you guys. That one's that one's very difficult. I'd probably go Jamie Chung, but it depends what way they'd want to go. You know, let's just move on. Next, now the rest of the crew that around uh, Kale and Akima it involves a variety of kind of fun alien sorts. There's Goon, who looks like that. Yep, and he's uh, he's kind of the stressed out warrior that somehow <laughs> somehow survives after literally holding a bomb as it explodes. And yeah, oh, that annoyed me. Anyway, besides that, he's a fun character, and I'd like to see someone like Zach Galifianakis. God, what a name! Zach Galifianakis play him because that's it is a similar kind of role to his in the Hangover films. He's kind of the of the group is <laughs> is the kind of you know slightly nerdy, not quite in the crew type. You know he's a bit of an outcast, uh, but he's a, he's a really fun character, and I think he'd play him really funny, which he needs to be. He, he's pretty much the comic relief. Yeah. Next, you also have Stith, who was originally played by Janine Garofalo, and is this badass. Kangaroo? They're weird alien designs. Anyway, I think uh, she's the right kind of fast-talking badass to warrant a little appearance by Leslie Jones, who's just got the... She's... I love her voice. She's got a great voice for voice acting, this kind of character. And then if, you know, if Goon was a bit more of an understated role, she could talk more and be more comedic relief, because Stiff doesn't talk a huge amount, I didn't feel, throughout it. Yeah. Next! And the third in our little crew is Monsieur Bastard himself, Preed. He's damn evil. Pretty much betrays everyone he can get his hands on. Yeah, god, what a prick. I think we're gonna have to cast somebody pretty diabolical to play him. Or not? It's much more of an interesting surprise if you have somebody who's more known for kind of comedic roles playing him. I have a couple of ideas about it. If you wanted somebody still young enough to do the motion capture as well as the voice, I'd maybe consider somebody like Bill Hader, because he could be surprisingly serious when it comes down to it, but is so good for comedic relief. And it would be it would be testing. You would not quite know what's going on with that character if he played him. However, I've got to say that it's easy to mistake the original voice actor for Steve Buscemi, so I'm kind of inclined to go with him, not for the motion capture probably, but for the voice, It uh, that would be fantastic. And again, he's kind of done quite a mix of serious and non-serious roles, you wouldn't quite know what's going on with that character until he reveals his true allegiances. Spoilies, he betrays everyone. Yeah, sorry. Did you not know that? Next. Finally saving the best for last, we need Captain Joseph Corso. He was Kiel's father's friend, but now he wants to hunt down the ship to help recreate Earth, or not, he betrays Kill as well. Yeah, God, God, brutal film, really, jeez. To do him, therefore you're gonna need somebody who's kind of got that streak in them, got that kind of nice, charismatic, middle-aged guy, but you're always kind of looking at him going, mm, <laughs> you might have betrayed me, and I think the perfect guy for that is John Hamm. Oh yes, oh yes. Just, I mean, he's the kind of guy that you could cast as a kind of modern day Han Solo, you know? If they hadn't been casting a young Han Solo when they'd done that film, I think that's the kind of guy they could have gone for, okay? And this is exactly what that is, just a slightly shadier Han Solo, basically, you know? And when I mean slightly shadier, he actually does betray everybody, which Han never did, yeah. It's like a Lando Calrissian. Bastard. Thank you guys for watching this fan cast, and don't forget to, you know, whatever else you want fan cast below or one minute reviewed or anything i'm just sitting here not quite quarantined yet but we're getting close getting close around here exciting stuff finger guns super cool uh yeah no just leave whatever below i'm open to trying anything